Hey, what's up guys? Tyler here with Secure Team. The question of the day is, is someone or something attempting to sabotage and or bring down the International Space Station? And hopefully by the end of this video, we will have a little bit more answers, hopefully. But it definitely seems like something strange is going on. The evidence supports it. So if you haven't uh, seen or heard anything about this, it all started about six days ago when news reports started hitting the web about how the International Space Station had just sprung a leak inside of the space station that was leaking out oxygen into space. So there was some sort of hole that uh, apparently they discovered uh, inside one of the capsules, uh, which they later believed was caused by a micrometeorite, you know, speeding through space. Some of these things are as small as a teeny tiny little pebble. Sometimes they can be as thin and small as a little paint chip, but because they are moving, you know, sometimes 25, 30,000 miles an hour through space, a tiny little chip of paint will go through this hardened metal like butter, like it's not even there. And so earlier in the week is when NASA and its Russian counterparts identified this tiny pressure leak on the space station. The microfracture was found in a side compartment of the Soyuz spacecraft that's currently docked with the space station. The fracture, they're saying, may be external damage and is believed to be the result of a micrometeorite. The fracture caused a drop in pressure and an air leak on the station, according to one of the Russian cosmonauts, who said that the problem has been resolved. And so since then, the uh, space crew on board had been conducting uh, some troubleshooting, as well as repair work on the leak. NASA explained uh, in a blog post that the leak has been isolated to a hole about two millimeters in diameter in the orbital compartment or upper section of the Soyuz spacecraft. And it should be noted that this specific section of the Soyuz where the hole was found, uh, it, this is not a, a part of the spacecraft that actually returns to Earth. It stays up there. Well, fast forward to the last 24 hours, where we now have new reports citing evidence from the Russian side now, uh, with claims that this space station leak may have been all-out total sabotage. Now, as to what that sabotage was trying to uh, attempt to do, whether it be, you know, cause the space station to fall apart, to potentially hurt anyone on board, uh, to uh, cause the space station to inevitably tumble back to Earth, or to just get the cosmonauts off of it to get them back to Earth, we just don't know yet. But what I can tell you guys, according to these new reports, is that basically that the air leak on the International Space Station last week could have been deliberate sabotage. Space Agency Chief Dmitry Rogozin said that the hole that they detected Thursday in a Russian spacecraft docked at the orbiting station was caused by a drill and could have been done deliberately either back on Earth or by astronauts in space. Astronauts used tape to seal the leak after it caused a small loss of pressure that was not life-threatening. There were apparently several attempts at drilling, Chief Rogozin said late Monday in televised comments, adding that the drill appeared to have been held by a wavering hand. What this is, he says, a production defect or some premeditated actions. He followed on by saying, quote, We are checking the Earth version, but there is another version that we do not rule out, and that is deliberate interference in space. And they are currently searching to identify the culprit, if that is indeed the case. And by the way, just a little bit more info about this spacecraft. It's the Russian Soyuz spacecraft, and where they found this hole was particularly in the capsule that is used to ferry astronauts back and forth and out into space. A Russian MP, who is a former cosmonaut, suggested that a psychologically disturbed astronaut could have done it to force an early return home, saying, quote, we are all human, and anyone might want to go home, but this method is really low. If a cosmonaut pulled this strange stunt, and that can't be ruled out, it's really bad. 
Alexander Zelenyakov, a former space engineer, stated, however, that drilling that particular hole in zero gravity would be nearly impossible in that part of the spacecraft. Further asking, why would cosmonauts do it? Because the hole is in the section of the ship that will not be used to carry astronauts back to Earth. So that makes no sense if it were a cosmonaut drilling the hole in hopes that it would allow them to end their mission early and let them get back to Earth. And really guys, that's, that's pretty much where we are at this moment. They are still trying to figure out what caused the hole, whether it looks on purpose or whether it was just a meteorite passing by. But at this moment, it seems like they're more leaning towards sabotage here. And so there's many different questions that we gotta, you know, we gotta, we have to look into this because could it have been a cosmonaut doing it so he could get an early trip home? Yes, it could have been. Could it have been someone down on the ground drilling this hole before it even went up into space attempting to cause some sort of catastrophic happening while they're up in there orbiting the Earth? Could it have, uh, you know, been something else inside the ship by another cosmonaut who maybe didn't want everyone to go home but did indeed maybe want some sort of catastrophic happening uh, to occur you know we just don't know so i have to say it's very scary for the astronauts up there and i hope they stay safe but this is a really uh, eerie uh, it doesn't make sense this story just does not make sense to me something is up there is some foul play happening up in space and hopefully they can get down to the bottom of it so Tell me what you guys think down below. And while we're speaking about stories that have kind of had updates over the weeks, uh, this story here where some ne really nefarious things are going on, well, there's another story that we have an update to today that I've posted maybe two or three different update videos on. But if you would had seen my original video about this, which I'll put the link to down below, where we had discussed these so-called sonic attacks that were happening on numerous people in various parts of the world uh, with 20 some US uh, embassy workers in Cuba all getting hit by this same uh, strange uh, sensation vibrating felt sort of like an energy wave hitting them uh, which then caused uh, things like slurred speech going blind momentarily getting very sick losing their balance happened to 20 some people at one embassy building in Cuba and that was the first video we reported on. Well, our next video was an update to that where it had happened again, only not in Cuba, but this time in China, where once again, US government employees suffered what believed were brain injuries after hearing these abnormal sounds, as they were called. And so in my uh, update video, I, I kind of went into more detail about the different types of energy that can and have and are being used on people and what they can do. The two most notable uh, being something called infrasound and ultrasound. And in that video, we kind of ruled out that this would have anything to do with something called infrasound, which uh, technically is used uh, in a different way and it causes a different set of physical symptoms when it is used on people. And before I read you this new report that was put out by the Cuban authorities and a, a scientist there sort of refuting that these could be ultrasonic, uh, you know, weapons of some sort, give this a listen from my video sort of describing how these ultrasonic waves would have to get to these people in these buildings. Now another thing about ultrasound, if that is what is being used here, Ultrasound is highly directional, meaning that you need to have a precise alignment in millimeters in order to steer an ultrasonic beam to actually hit someone from across a room. And every time they move, each emitter would have to carefully steer its beams accordingly. But then again, given the fact that it's pretty hard for even a powerful ultrasound to reach us, and that most of it bounces right off of our skin, it seems to be a strange choice for whatever device is being used against these people in Cuba and China, despite having some uh, physical symptoms that these people are also facing. And not to mention the fact that all of these people were inside of an office building, walking up and down halls, in separate rooms and on separate floors. So 
how would you have an ultrasonic device pointed at these people unless it could actually look through walls? And again, these things have to be highly precise. They have, you know, usually the target has to be standing still. But these people are behind walls, they're in different rooms, and yet they're all being hit. And that is what makes this even creepier and scarier. Okay, so let's pause right there for a moment. Let me show you this new updated report. Uh, we have a story here uh, coming straight from the halls of Cuba, where a Cuban scientist has now rejected the idea that microwaves are a source of the mysterious acoustic attacks on diplomats. And I'll put a link to this down below. But uh, basically, in a nutshell, it says here that a Cuban government investigator looking into the reports of these mysterious acoustic attacks on both U.S. and Canadian diplomats has dismissed a U.S. government theory that microwave weapons emitting concentrated beams of radiation may have been used in the incidents, saying, quote, If you look at the alleged events, there have been reports that there are several people in a room with thick walls and thick windows. This is a kind of weapon that doesn't exist. It's science fiction, not science. He goes on to say, quote, First, it was sonic. Now, it's microwave. What next? Kryptonite? Uh, this joke referring to the earlier theory that some sort of sonic apparatus may have been emitting high-powered ultrasound waves uh, could have caused the injuries. And now, this new researcher and his investigators are working on a paper to rebute the now microwave apparatus theory. Stating that for a microwave apparatus to work, it would have to have been used at a close distance and none of the diplomats reported seeing the alleged perpetrators. He said that Cuban authorities had investigated the report that one diplomat who suffered an apparent attack had seen a van speed off that the vehicle belonged to a church. And so, yeah, uh, if you notice what the man said, he sort of echoed what I said in a previous uh, update, which I just played for you guys a second ago, where we were kind of describing how some of this technology works. And with most of it, you have to be extremely close, you have to be zeroed in on a certain person. Uh, oftentimes, these things cannot go through thick walls, thick windows, uh, on moving targets, no less. You know, the person would need to be standing completely still so that, that they could aim and, you know, fire the energy wave. And that's just not happening here. So, obviously... Something else is being used because this isn't, you know, it's not a joke. We had 20-some people throughout the day on different floors in an office building being hit. They were hearing strange sounds, felt what they described as a strange energy hitting their heads, inside their heads, uh, causing all of these terrible symptoms that I mentioned earlier. Then it began happening in China, strangely and suspiciously to U.S. and Canadian uh, consulate workers. And so, I mean, I'm of the opinion that whatever we are dealing with here is like nothing we've ever seen before. Something is being tested on these people, and it's a something that can go through thick walls and thick windows and hit people that are moving back and forth. It's almost, it doesn't matter. Whatever they are using, this apparatus, this acoustic device, whatever you want to call it, it seems to be some pretty creepy, unknown, possibly some black budget, black project type stuff. So stay tuned for more updates. Uh, we'll see what more info we can find. And just real quick on a much lighter note, before we go, I'd like to feature for you guys a couple of uh, photos that were posted online and shared around on Twitter by a bunch of different people of uh, yet another group of super fans, awesome, awesome people, who sent me these pictures. Uh, these came in from Colton and Shelly, who say that they are major super fans of the channel. Uh, we've got multiple different pics here, all of them uh, wearing one of my uh, official Secure Team shirts, which you guys can find on the online shop. Uh, although on these shirts, it seems that they've uh, uh, taken them up a, an extra notch or two by adding uh, the word uncensored underneath the uh, Secure Team logo, which I think is pretty cool. And on the backs of the shirts, you can see where they have added the Stay Safe Guys uh, ending quote that I love to use. Stay safe, guys. And um, yeah, I thought that was really cool. So, this is just, uh, this is epic. I want to give a big thanks 
to the both of you as well as the woman here wearing the shirt who goes by Unicorn Zombie Princess on Twitter who originally posted these and sent them my way. Um, it's been amazing the number of shirts that uh, people have been purchasing from the US to Mexico to Lithuania, Australia, Germany, Italy. So I, I just want to say again a special thanks to all of you guys out there. If you'd like to grab your own shirt, head over to our online shop. We've actually just added a few new things. We have an official Secure Team retro backpack that you can grab up and uh, put all your UFO hunting gear in there. Put your camera in there, your microphones, and uh, you know keep your stuff handy for that one moment that you could truly capture something amazing. Uh, we also, as usual, have shirts, hoodies, buttons as well as a new shirt edition uh, you're seeing here which originally comes in this sort of dark gray asphalt color uh, within red letters states hashtag insomnia team so we now have insomnia team shirts for the insomnia army out there if you want to stop by grab one up i choose maybe black or uh, dark gray it seems to look the best so you know this is for you guys. You guys asked and requested it, and um, the support and show out of you guys grabbing shirts and merch and supporting me on Patreon every month, especially with how YouTube, you know, despite the fact that I'm gaining some days 10,000 subscribers within every two days, you know, my video views have been slowly decreasing, and I figured out what it's because. It's because people aren't getting my videos. They're not getting notified. It's almost like we've been blacklisted. So, you know, your support on Patreon and through uh, merch sales really does help this work. It allows me to breathe and continue doing what I do, and that is finding the strange and mysterious news, connecting the dots, and uncovering the long-protected cover-up of the alien and UFO phenomena by the powers that be, and that with which we are making huge strides in uncovering, pulling it apart thread by thread with the help of all of you guys. So. Myself and all of you are Secure Team. You guys know I got your back. I know you got mine. So with that, you guys have a great night or day wherever you are. And as always, stay safe, guys. <laughs>